I want to hear the most like crazy fucked up like sexual experience you've had here. Uh, okay. Um, so, man, I don't know if I could talk about this stuff. Dude. <laughs> Just uh, so I've had girls get into fights over who gets my cum in their mouth. You know? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Wingman Podcast. Today, we have two very, very special guests. Uh, well, first of all, we're in Colombia, and we transport our entire podcast studio here to Colombia, so I hope you guys appreciate that. And we also have two very established gentlemen here. We have David Bond and Mike Squatting Casanova, a.k.a. Pickup Alpha. And, um, you know, these guys are both OGs in the game. Uh, very, very interesting, unique individuals. Mike, you're based out of Vegas, right? And then right. Uh, David is based out of wherever the fuck his passport allows him to go. Yeah, I always joke that uh, I'm like a homeless guy with money. I don't really have a home. I just kind of live wherever, you know? It's crazy. So. It's, it's probably the most... I, I feel like you're kind of almost one of the pioneers to like, you know, the... What, what do you call it? The Digital nomad. The digital nomad lifestyle yeah. with... You know, having a crazy awesome lifestyle with girls. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Pretty insane. I guess you could describe it that way. Yeah, I actually remember um, being back in Australia. And um, this is when I first heard about you. Before we actually met, it's like five years ago, uh, a lot of the local PUA guys were talking about you. And they're talking about the stuff you're doing in Asia. And because, uh, I mean, David was in Asia, just meeting tons of girls. And uh, do you, you want to talk a little bit about that in the background? Um, yeah, I mean, my, my first uh, my first couple of years, I spent a lot of time in, in Asia, mostly places like Japan and uh, Hong Kong and Korea and, Th you know, like all the big Asian countries that are popular. And um, most of my videos started there. And uh, I kept accidentally making viral videos that kept making the news. So... You know, I made the news in Hong Kong. I made the news in Taiwan. I made the news in Japan. I made the news in Thailand, like over and over and over. Like every, you know, every couple months, one of my videos would somehow get international global attention, <laughs> you know? And so uh, that's kind of how I started. And, you know, things have tamed down since then. I've, uh, you know, traveled to India, parts of Europe, and now Latin America. I'm really, I'm really interested in making, uh, making the news again. No, um, I got that <laughs> under control. I got that under control. I've like I've really adjusted to understanding like what signs to see when the news is like it's kind of like a you know like a, a dog that can smell the storm coming. You know, like when you guys were in Mexico, like I yeah I remember yeah I detected that like immediately. It's crazy. Like we were just about to have a media scandal in Mexico, and Dave told us he like sat me and Brad down, and he's like, "You guys are about to have media." And we're like. What? I'm like, nah, Dave, you're yeah, At this point, it was just a single Facebook post. But I, I was looking at the comments and the speed and the likes and the, the rate and the way the language was. And I had seen the pattern so many times that I knew immediately what was about to happen. And I go, look, first it's going to be a Facebook post. Then it's going to be a small random influencer, then a bigger one, then a small news blog, then a big news blog, then TV. And that's the chronological order. But right now you guys are at the very earliest stages. And my, what was my suggestion? To leave, right? Yeah, it's great. And I left. I, mo I moved out of, I was like, I know it's going to happen. I left because I knew it was going to happen. And then you guys were like, no, you know, like Brad's all whatever. <laughs> and then, and then do you guys no, remember Mark. like you guys were at the airport leaving and then Brad's I was on the flight. I was on the fucking flight. And then the first like feminist blog came out. And then three days later, we're in Forbes. Yeah. Forbes, Mexico, the Daily Mail. And like, we were on the flight and I'm like, I, we land, we're at the airport in Brazil and I see the article and I'm just like, holy shit, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got a lot of experience in that world. Yeah, yeah. You Very know, the, 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 the news, the media, the narratives and, um, you know, what cultural sensitivities trigger uh, outrage, et cetera, et cetera, you know. And so I, as I kind of saw the matrix, I first I started using it um, for my own purposes. I started playing with the media for the purpose of profiting. And then I just stopped doing it because it got, I realized like, you can't scale being a bad bad guy. You can't you can't scale being a villain because there's a point where so many people know that eventually it's gonna you know what I mean bite you in the butt. It's kind of like Borat. Yeah. Like Borat was funny until he got so famous that he couldn't be Borat anymore. 
you know what I'm talking about? Like the Borat character couldn't, couldn't exist now because the moment you see him, everyone's like, ah, it's Borat. We know, you know what I mean? It's the same thing with like being a villain. Like you can be a villain so many times, but eventually you're going to bump into some guy on the spectrum walking at Starbucks and he's going to want to do something. So that's why I stopped, just stopped. I'm like, ah, this is getting like a little bit too crazy, you know? Um, but yeah, that started in Asia and, um, you know, the channel has been, you know, uh, evolving and I started with doing videos, uh, on the GoPro on my head and then on my chest and then, you know, picking up girls and pushing myself into interesting situations. And now, you know, it's evolved into like me giving my opinions on life and, you know, sharing uh, vlogs with pretty girls. And it's kind of like exploring, uh, my latest, uh, challenge is the harem quest, which is, a uh, the attempt to have, you know, 10 plus girlfriends simultaneously with me at the same time. Kinda Which like, is, you, you've achieved it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I yeah. met your harem. I was like yeah. clubbing <laughs> with them at the night. It was fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that was, uh, that's the latest challenge. And the new challenge will be to replicate exactly what I just did in a completely new country with a completely new Instagram and everything. And so I'm confident that I'll be able to do that. I'm, I'm almost certain that I could do that. So, uh, and if I can replicate the harem quest in, many, many countries, um, then, you know, I mean, what's the next thing, right? Uh, I don't know, but, um, yeah, yeah, that's how it started. Pretty crazy. And so, so Mike, you, what, what's your story? How did you get involved with David? How did you guys meet? We both started making YouTube videos. I think David actually reached out to me. I think at that time point, he saw my YouTube videos. We hey, Mike, met. Can you uh, bring the mic closer? Yeah. Um, he hit me up. I think we met in Santa Monica, third street. We did uh, some approaches to, uh, talk to some girls. When did you guys meet? 2013, 2013, so it's been crazy. nine years. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got along, had a good interaction. And then at that time point, I was an engineer for a biotech company in California for seven years and, uh, just got laid off too, you know? So it's probably one of the best things that's happened to me because I don't think if I got laid off from my engineering job, I would just move to Vegas uh, and teach dating full time. So the fact that I got laid off, I had almost a year's worth of severance and unemployment. I was like, all right, I have nothing to lose. I already have some clients. Um, and then I actually approached David. I said, hey, listen, you know, why don't we do a 30 day road trip? Um, you know, there's some clients that don't necessarily want to come to Vegas, but you know how it is. A lot of, a lot of dating coaches, they do this like country, uh, country tour, or world tour. Um, yeah, so we hit up like 10 different cities over 30 days, uh, Miami, New York, Chicago. So we kind of, uh, you know, our friendship grew. And, um, and basically after the trip, David kind of kept going to explore the rest of Asia. And then I stayed in Vegas to make more YouTube videos and teach clients. So exactly the same thing that you do. Uh, but, but in Vegas instead of Toronto. Cool. Cool. So you guys actually almost like started together, but you decided you're like, I'm going to go do this. I want to the world. And you're like, I'm just going to stay like based out of Vegas. Yeah. So we have this joke. I'm the dating coach. Dave is the dating doer. <laughs> Got it. You know? He's the dating so, teacher. I'm the dating doer. Yeah. You know, fun. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's crazy, man. That's a crazy story. And now you guys are partnered up on. Uh, you have a program together. Yeah. So uh, the program is called the Millionaire Social Circle, and what it kind of is is a combination of what Mike's been doing and what I've been doing combined. So he's been doing, you know, um, boot camps in Vegas, uh, helping guys. He has a program called Immersion, where guys will live with Mike. He does cold approach. He helps their dating. He helps their texting. Um, you know helps their fashion, all kinds of, it basically tries to get them to improve. Cool. And in my case, you know, I'm really good at like travel hacking and, you know, going to new countries, uh, discovering un, uh, undiscovered cities like Cali, like, you know, even Tim, who's like, I can't believe the city's real. Like, like, it's so crazy. No one's ever heard of it. It's so beautiful. It's so safe. It's so nice. And we thought, you know, how cool would it be is if we could have like Mike, uh, Mike's program, but like on the road and have it be global. Cool. And have a bigger emphasis on using like social media. Cause I mean, now the way things are going, you know, what you do on the internet is starting to matter almost more than what you do in real life. Definitely. And we wanted to have a program that would help guys catch up to that reality. That's really interesting because I feel like 
we've been here for four days and we've met at least three girls that we just matched on Tinder that knew David. Yeah, probably more than three girls. <laughs> like I'm at the club the other night and this girl's like yelling about how she hates David. And I'm like, have you ever met David? I asked her, I'm like, have you ever met David? She's like, no. I'm like, then how can you hate him? And she's like rent, ranting to me for 20 minutes about how yeah. she hates her Instagram ads. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, the other day I was on a Tinder date with this like gross fucking girl. Like this, this girl, did, she sent me her friend's picture. Yeah. And uh, she like manipulated me like meeting up with her because I thought she was hot and she was gross. So I'm like, whatever, <laughs> I'll hang out with you. Take me out. Like, let's fucking show me around the city. And, and then she was like, oh, you're friends with that David guy. I don't like him. And I'm like, why don't you like him? She's like, I don't like his ads. But this is crazy. <laughs> like, how, like your, your fucking online presence has just like affected like yeah. every girl in the city knows well, who the, you are. The girl at the bar you said was commenting about how my girls are victims. And then you're there with the girls. <laughs> they're with your girls. And the assistant. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was asking them, I was like, what's it like to be one of David's girlfriends? And they're like, we love it. We love David. I'm like, this is so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the irony is like wow. you have a woman who's spent 20 minutes explaining to you why the women a foot away are all victims of me. And then you just walk one foot and you say, so are you girls victims? And they're like, no, we're we love it. Like, yeah. it's like, what kind of, is, is that not the funniest thing in the world? You know what I mean? That's we're, like, we're living in a crazy world, bro. <laughs> why, why do you think they think that? Well, I mean, look, um, a lot of the things that I do are very polarizing. So, you know, there's some girls that see what I do and they're incredibly curious. They're incredibly turned on. There's this, uh, there's this, this insatiable curiosity. Like, what is this guy doing to make this many women cure? You know, like they look at it and it looks like something you've never seen. And then you have the other side, which is a girl who feels really uncomfortable with it, a little insecure. And like anything else, when you feel negative emotions, you have a weird, you start to create stories to justify why you feel that way. So in their case, they're like, oh, well, the girls are victims. The girls are uh, being fooled. You know, they're being paid. And, and so these girls, they create these stories because in their reality, they would never be comfortable in a setting mm -hmm. where girls are having lots of fun and there's one guy. So they, they, they just can't get in the mind of a girl who is happy that way. It's so they have a, to, you know what I mean? It's an insecurity thing, yeah? Um, it's insecurity, it's confusion. And honestly, like, to be fair, like, what, some of the things that I do are in a very literal sense not believable like like there's some things there's some stories that i have that i don't tell because i know it won't sound real <laughs> and even though like some of the video some of the stories i have are accompanied with a gopro video where the whole thing is documented but no one like like if i say it verbally you know like if i if, for example like if i say um if i say you know i had a nine sum right no one's gonna believe that but if, if i show the video which I have many videos of these events occurring, not, not like secret camera stuff, like little cell phone stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to talk about that much because it doesn't, it doesn't sound real. You know what I mean? percent. I mean, Justin and I get that all the time. Like we have guys coming up to us and you know, they watch the podcast before meeting us and they're like, we thought you were full of shit, full of yeah, shit yeah. until we met you. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> right, right. It's kind of funny because a lot of guys, they, uh, they'll throw shade at me. And they'll say like, oh, this is fake. It's all bullshit. Yeah. And I always say, you know, it sucks. That I don't have like an OnlyFans that you can yeah. subscribe to, to like see. Yeah. Like Justin would be talking and about like, like, yeah, I do. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like you could just sign up and <laughs> fucking see you idiot. You know what I mean? Like Justin would be talking about like five songs, like three songs, four songs, like every weekend and stuff. Like I had a threesome this weekend. Yeah. But then when these guys start to hang out with us, it's like, holy fuck. Yeah. Because it sounds like a guy who's like yeah. lying. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, I made a million dollars. <laughs> You're like, uh, okay, like what's the reality? Until they see it, yeah. You know what I mean? And um, the best, the best, uh, the best testimonials are from like guys who have lived with me because I can't fake, if I, if I was fake, someone living with me would certainly know. And then when they're, when they're living with me, it's like, holy fuck. Like this is like, like it's like, it's like it takes a second to like register. You know, it's the same thing with like, I, I live with you. And I live with Brad. And someone, if you pulled up a photo of Bradicus and you described what he's doing, no one's gonna, no <laughs> one's gonna, you're like, this guy looks like he rolled out of a World of Warcraft convention and he just got a divorce. <laughs> and like, you're just, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like I'll talk to one of our students about Brad. And I'm like, Brad is the proof that all your excuses are, are bullshit. This guy's chubby. He's balding. Like every, everything about Brad objectively is not the hottest thing ever, but the Brad is just, you know, he's a, he's a guy that just does the right thing with, with the girl stuff. He gets 
results. Some of them are not the greatest results, but the point is like, <laughs> once you live with Brad, you can't doubt the stories Shots because you're fired. like, okay, like, hello, like I can see it, you know? But um, it's the same thing with like some of my stuff or some of Mike's stuff. Some of these students that like live with Mike, some of the stuff that he has on his like cell phone, like uh, he'll post stories. Uh, th there's a girl I'm dating in Vegas who met one of Mike's students and she's like, yeah, there's no way. There's no way this guy is. Like he's so, he's so negative. He's, you know, kind of dorky looking. And then I, I, sh I sent her a screen recording of, cause, cause he just busts out his phone on and puts it on stories. And it was like him approaching him, approaching and then him kissing a girl. I showed it to the girl and she's like, I can't believe like, wow. Like my, even, even Veronica, she says that Mike is magic, you know? And, but that, that's the point is that, you know, video evidence, living immersion, like these are like mm -hmm. things that just sniff out any accusation of like fake or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. 100%. I think a lot of people don't understand like how much volume, what goes on behind the scenes, right? Like they might see a picture of Brad and they're like, no way but they don't see that this guy is sending text messages 20 hours a day yeah, and not sleeping, yeah. right? Brad's uh, or even my students, but we're out in the club like six hours a day talking to like 30, 40 girls, right? So that times 30 days for an immersion, I mean, that's probably a thousand girls, right? So we're compressing, it might even be a lifetime's worth of approach in less than a month, Definitely. right? So no wonder you get, you see those crazy things. And a lot of times it's just by being in the right place in the right time, magic things can happen. Well, think about the average guy. The average guy isn't approaching any girls, right? Like yeah. the average guy will approach like one girl a year, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, cause they don't fucking know game. They haven't studied like a decade or more pickup or, you know, tested like thousands of different strategies or talked to thousands of girls, right? Yeah. And so once they get themselves out of, you know, their own way and get rid of their anxiety, they could do that, but they'll, they'll never get to that point where they get rid of the anxiety where they could go to the thousand approaches or, you know, all these, cause like, you know, what's crazy to me, David, like with you, you figured out some of the most crazy shit. Like a lot of the, your Tinder strategies, a lot of your online dating strategies, like for example, running Instagram ads to meet girls. You're the only person I know who you know, has an audience and like talks about that. Yeah. I feel like you, you kind of pioneered that. And then like a lot of other guys started doing that, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's like, how the fuck do you figure that out? But I, I feel like you, you know, as you guys said, you only figure that out by doing it, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot of tests. How do you figure this stuff out, man? You, you're very creative. Well, you're a very creative individual. How do you figure, figure out these like crazy dating strategies? Well, you know, um, one of the things that's unique about me is I'm always constantly getting banned from things. I'm always getting banned from uh, Airbnb and, you know, all, and so when you get banned and you try to like, get unbanned, it, re it requires that you think a little bit outside the box. You're like, how do I actually, and then you end up indirectly learning. Like for example, with Tinder, if you get banned from Tinder enough times and you recover it, you, you actually start to realize like, oh, clearing the cache matters. Having your different phone number matters. Having a different email address matters. And then you're like, well, how do I generate those quickly? And then you end up indirectly learning a weird skill set of like privacy and security and stuff. And so in the case of ads, um, Originally, I met some guys that were experimenting with this, but their the results were trash, but they got a lot of traffic. And I was like, interesting. Like, what if I tried this, but like did my own style? And so my first um, ads I ran in Europe and my first like three attempts, nothing. And then I did one attempt that I got like hundreds of DMs. And I was like, oh, Interesting. So I took that and then I tweaked that and then I just kept tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. And I, I think I've probably spent maybe like four grand on Instagram ads Crazy. in the past. And so what happens is all this tweaking, you just discover like what starts to work and then you just build on top of that. And so, um, you know, in my case now, like uh, it's trivial. Like I, I, there's an Instagram that I created because a lot of the students, they don't, they're having trouble like relating with my stuff because it's so unrelatable. So for the purpose of teaching, I actually decided to make a brand new Instagram that I created yesterday. It's called Wholesome David Good Boy. And I don't have any photos of me and girls. It's literally photos of me and my mom. <laughs> and with like, you know, like this is a photo that I have and the caption is, you know, between studying chemical engineering, loving my mom and not having a harem. I feed, <laughs> I, I feed giraffes with, con with consent, of course. Um, anyway, the point of it is like, I made this Instagram. I started running ads immediately. And within five hours, I got a date, right? So this girl doesn't know anything. She doesn't know my, my real stuff. Um, but I'm able to do that because I know what kind of ads, how to tweak the ads so they get approved. 
the captions and all that. And that's, that's from probably like three or four years of different, different testing, you know, it's insane. And, um, yeah, I mean like, you know, I like thinking outside the box. I like to test things. I'm always just curious about like, what are the limits? And, um, you know, it's a, it's a hobby, you know, it's, it's like tinkering or it's like those, you know, like my uncle, he likes to build stuff out of wood and he just builds random stuff. It just feels good to make stuff and it's fun to use your hands. Like with me, it's fun to use my mind to like see if I could work around the system. And so since I travel and I like to meet girls and I like to hack the system and work around it, you just, you know, over, over time, you just realize that, you know, and some, I mean, some of the things that I do, I can spend, so the, one of the ads I ran, um, uh, I got uh, 76,000 women to see my Instagram. That's insane. You know what I mean? So, and I spent like $38 for that. Right? You spent $38. Yeah, and so then. 76,000 women, sorry. Yeah, so like, like nobody, nobody's doing that, you know, and um, when you have that amount of eyeballs on your, on your stuff, you're going to have a, a, a percentage of those message you. And then if you have a really good funnel, with compliance tests and you, you know, we all have different values for me, cooperation and obedience and uh, femininity are like huge values for me. So like, you know, my girls, if they all come over, I could just say, can you girls cook and clean? And they'll just do it. You know, there is no like, there's no like, no, <laughs> you know, I don't have a no in my world. The girls that say no, usually don't pass the screening far enough to get to, to physically be in my presence. And then you treat them really well when they actually are screened down. And so when you have a huge group of girls and they're all that way, it's just like, it's, it's, it's like magic, you know, it's crazy. And it's so in my mind, it's like a cheat code. Yeah. And so like, you know, like a lot of the Instagram is a, a byproduct of girls that went down essentially a marketing funnel where they saw an ad, they clicked, they messaged, they passed screening, they met me. And then once they get past the finish line, the treatment is, I, I'm, I'm so, I, I spoil these girls with fun. I spoil them with, you know, like I'm constantly taking, you know, uh, putting time into understanding their struggles and I, I know their mo mothers and stuff. I go way beyond what the regular guy would do because these girls have earned the status that they have of being a girl that went down that. So then all of them have this, like, that's why, that's why the, that's why a lot of the girls that you, you meet are, are so excited to be around me because they, there's a sense of accomplishment because they know how strict I am. I'm like so strict. Girls are, Girls are coming in the group and they get smacked out so quick. So when they get to stay, it's like, oh, dude, I earned this shit. You know, it's like mm -hmm. a little, it's like a little blue heart or a purple heart. You know, you see another guy with a purple heart. You're like, dude, that shit's hard to get. Well, being one of my, my girls is. What's a purple heart? Purple heart is a, in the military. They give a purple heart to someone who like survived like a, a war injury. Okay. So in the military, a purple heart is like, is like, basically it means you almost died. So if two soldiers see each other and they have a purple heart, like without knowing anything about each other, they have respect. Well, like with, you know, being one of my chicks is kind of like that because they're like, do you survived all that? <laughs> you didn't get blocked like me four times, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So <clears throat> a lot of these girls that you we were talking about a girl that you just blocked <laughs> before we like, started shooting. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the girls, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the girls that you guys are meeting are, I call them like, like block victims <laughs> where they're just like, I'm, they're like, I'm like, you know, this, like they can't believe I blocked him over something that dumb or that petty or whatever, oh. you know, it's hilarious. hilarious. I think it's funny though. Cause it's great. Cause you're, you're, you're demonstrating personal boundaries. And I, I find that's like an attractive trait on anyone. Uh, so let me ask you this. What's it like having a dozen girlfriends? Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of management. And so, you know, having like two or three girlfriends is manageable, but once you exceed four to five or beyond, uh, you know, you will need like help. And that is what Veronica is. Veronica is my personal assistant. So my personal assistant who used to be a girlfriend, she was one of the girls, you know, and uh, now our relationship has moved to be more professional. I mean, we still, we still sometimes hook up and stuff, but um, it's mostly just professional. She, she helps organize dates. She handles disputes. Um, so like right now we're wanting the girls to go on the podcast. So instead of me individually messaging them and like handling all the logistics, I go, Veronica, Ask the girls who wants to do this, figure out a time somewhere around 6, 7 p.m. And so she's just doing it as I'm talking to you, right? That makes having a harem easier because again, it doesn't matter that, that it looks cool on Instagram. There is work involved in, in, in having a group of any size that's a people where you're trying to accomplish something, you know? Like even, even, like, a, <clears throat> even like a teacher, 
who's trying to have like a field trip, like you have to have a school bus. You can't like have individual cars. They have like planned meals and like there's all kinds of things that just like make the interaction smooth that you, you couldn't do it the regular way. You know? it, it blows my mind because I've met your assistant and I compared it because I have two female assistants in Toronto and then me and Matt have a bunch of like interns who work with us, okay? And so it, it's just like so difficult to find someone who's like skilled and intelligent and like just understands things. And so I, I, I've seen her coaching your students or like not, not coaching your students, but like helping them talk to girls and stuff like that. Or um, even like, la like the last few nights when we're out, mm -hmm. Veronica's out every night and I'll bring girls to her and the girls are just instantly comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And that's so rare. It's so fucking rare. So like how do, let, let's say there's a guy out there who wants to find a attractive female assistant to help him build his own harem. How do you um, find an assistant like that? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know about like build his own harem. Like that's a whole can of worms. But um, you know, my philosophy with assistants is uh, I try to treat them really well. I'm very, I'm very strict that an assistant has to respect me and they have to be comfortable with the things I'm doing. Any, even hint of judgment on anything I'm doing is going to make me not consider them as an assistant. Um, I need to be respected. I need her to be in alignment with me. And I also like to place incentives such that my assistants are aligned with me. My, my, like our incentives are the same. So I like to give little, little bonuses that are attached to things that I, cause like the, you know, as an assistant who's paid a fixed amount, her incentive is to work as little as she can. And there's some tasks I give her that are time consuming. And so like, here, here's a, here's a very trivial example. She goes on dates with me. Some of the restaurants, the meals are expensive. So I say, Hey Veronica, listen, um, I'm going to offer you something. I, you know, I'm going to invite you on this date. Uh, you can have a plate of food or I can just give you a tip. That's like, all, you know, the tip is going to be probably half of what the food cost. I go that way, you know, cause I, it, it's, it's, it's really fucked up to like ask her not to just have water. Cause then it, it's not, it doesn't feel good. She's, she's like, she feels like, oh, I'm like the little kid at the table who gets the child's meal or something. But I'll say, Hey Veronica, we're going to go to an expensive place. I want you to have a good time. I'm happy to take care of your plate of food. But as an option, if you want to take 50,000 pesos instead that, you know, what's more valuable to you? food or, or, or some extra money. And a lot of times she takes the extra money, right? I don't have to do that. It's her job to do what she's supposed to do. But that's an example where I, I, I do little things to make sure that she's happy, make sure that her, her uh, uh, incentives are aligned with mine. And I'm also taking a lot of attention to her stress levels. I'm always like, hey, baby, if you need, a, if you need, a, if you need an off day, I'm not going to get upset. If you're stressed out, let me know. If you need extra sleep, I'm constantly making efforts. These are things I don't have to do. But, but you do these enough times with an assistant and then she'll eventually just start to respect you and like you enough where like if you pull Veronica in the room, she's going to defend me like crazy. And the thing is when other girls meet her, she's working for me because the girls can feel that she's likes me. She respects me. I treat her well. And so that, that, that value is being transferred to all the people around. So it's, it's almost like she's not only an assistant, she's like a PR person. She's a, uh, a public defender in a way, right? And that's just through attention to detail, uh, paying a little bit more than you should, taking interest in her feelings and all that. And every assistant, you know, I, I try to do that way because cause I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not a regular guy, right? I'm not asking her to like do paperwork. I'm asking her to do, go on dates with me and like be it's like the, the things that she's seeing with her eyeballs are absurd. Yeah, so crazy. I need to take account of that. You know, this is not like, hi, me assistant, can you please um, organize the documents? It's like, hey, I'm about to have a six sum. Can you please hand me the lube? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is going to require a girl to have a little bit of extra attention on the emotions and the pay and all that. And so um, I think we'll, we can turn this air conditioning down a little bit. Yeah. Or we can uh, reset all the cameras. Like, okay, right now what we're doing is an example. I want her to get the girls excited to be on this podcast. Mm. And Veronica is the key to that. Yeah. It's so if she feels like we are genuinely bragging about her, now she's like, oh, this is so fun. I want to be like, she's going to pull them into that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, dude, I, I genuinely was like, I told her like a million times, like I'm mind fucked at her like skills and abilities. Yeah. Because yeah. like you, you literally have a girl who's going on dates with you because you don't really speak Spanish. No. Um, and uh, that's another aspect of like harem stuff is, uh, you know, I don't, I, I have too many um, too many leads to go on individual dates. 
So what I do is I, I go on what I call a bond double date. So like a legacy double date is two guys and two girls, but like a bond double date is two girls and me, like two new girls. Like a first date with two girls that are totally, and you know, sometimes it'll go up to four. So I'll have four new girls <laughs> that are, their first date is uh, me and three other girls. And so in that case, I'll bring the assistant because what we do, <laughs> again, all this is gonna sound just so crazy is that Veronica, she understands my date game. She understands the questions I ask. And she understands, like, she's seen it so many times that she is essentially an extension of me. So a lot of times, you know, the girls sit down and, um, you know, one of the instructions of, of Veronica is make sure the girls talk to each other. Make sure they're trading information. Make sure they become friends. If one girl isn't talking, make sure she starts talking. Because girls will feel left out if they're shy or whatever. Um, here are the questions I like to ask. And a lot of times the tone is... The, the girls are like, okay, this guy, like, what the heck's going on? And they'll go through Veronica. They'll say, hey, because they know I can't speak Spanish. So they'll ask Veronica questions thinking that Veronica's going to, like, give an answer that's that I don't know, right? But then her answers are all flattering to me. And when someone is bragging about you, it's so much more powerful than you brag about yourself. 100%. And And if it's in a language you don't understand, you... you it's like, there's something, there's something about that. And so since Veronica has so much history with me, she knows all the stories. I mean, dude, it's just, it's just like the value asset is so big. And in a harem setting, like, like what girl goes on a date with a guy that brings a fucking assistant and then they can ask her questions and she's like, you know what I mean? Like, this is what makes the things that I'm doing like qualitatively different than any girl, any, any guy, any girl uh, is ever going to meet again. So, so, and then you add the Instagram and you add the, the hair. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's like, you're the Dos Equis guy, you know? So David, um, including your assistant, all the girls you're around are all bisexual. Yeah. Yeah. So bisexuality is a requirement. So, um, you know, that that's established, uh, within the first like few messages. That, sh that should be on a shirt. Bisexuality is a requirement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, bi, bi girls are done. Not in, uh, if they're in Spanish. If they're not bisexual, they're they're blocked immediately. We'll send David a shirt. They're just blocked. Says, yeah. So how do you how do you filter out girls who are bisexual? So, so typically I run ads. Girls will message me, and then I have a little pre written message. It says has a little genie. It says before we begin talking, here's some questions. If you answer correctly, we'll continue talking. Something like that. And it's like, are you bisexual? Do you have a boyfriend? How old are you? That's it. Simple. And then again, the girl's responding to an ad. So, so she's like unclear what this is. And a lot of times they just answer it. They think like, like, like it, like it's instant. It has emojis. So it looks like a little game. And, um, so if they say no, I just block them, you know, it'd be simple as that. Then, <laughs> yeah. You're not bisexual. It'd be blocked. You're not bis <laughs> How dare you not be bisexual block? Yeah. It, uh, no, I have Wait, a is everyone on the same page here. Are we all into bisexual girls? Yeah. Well, obviously mm -hmm. the fuck. Well, I'm wearing a bi girls only <laughs> shirt. Not Matt designed this. Girls. It's two girls kissing. It says bi girls only. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I, I want to get another. I want to make. It, we should make another shirt now. It says bisexuality is a requirement. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. So, what do you guys think of straight girls? Uh, I mean, look, they're nice and they're beautiful, and I mean, some of them have slipped in where they where they lie about it. They're like, some girls would be like, I, I'm not bisexual, but I'm curious, and I'm like, okay, good enough. And then they and then uh, I've only had one freak out where the girl basically was lying about bi, being bi. And she just went all the way down, all the way to the end. And then she's like, uh, I can't do this. And she's like, put on her clothes, just like left. Oh God. And Blocked. I was like, what the heck's going on? Yeah. And I was like, what the heck's going on? I'm bisexual. I'm like, how did you even get in here? Like, how did you pass the screening? Like, what the fuck's going on? You know? And of course, I don't say that. I'm polite. But um, yeah, you just, you don't want to have a muddy list where it's like mixed. You, it's got to be pure cocaine. Did like, you guys hang out one-on-one -on -one first? Or it was it first time was a group setting? Um, in, in that case, it was a group date. Uh, and basically it was like, oh, we're having a jacuzzi and wine and popcorn. And then in the jacuzzi is where she kind of freaked out because jacuzzi was fine. But then some of the girls started kissing and taking off their tops. And that's when she's like, oh my God. And she just jumped out. And it was weird. Cause like she wanted to get mad at me, but she didn't have any material to get mad at me. Cause like nothing, I, you know what I mean? So I got out of the, I got out of the jacuzzi. I'm like, Hey, listen, it's no problem. It's no problem. Like what, what would you like? What, what do you need from me? Do you need, you want me to give you some taxi money? Do you want me to? you know, dry you off. You want to chill? Like what's going on? And she's just like, I like, I'm not uncomfortable. I'm not comfortable with this. I go, that's fine. So then thank you for communicating that. Let me know what I can do to make you comfortable. Like, you know what I mean? Like I totally was like chill about it. And um, then she just left. And then she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just like, this is like really 
crazy, you know? I'm like, well, I mean, you lied, you know? You said you weren't by, and then what do you think's gonna happen? You, you, you respond to a guy who's running ads and every photo is him with 50 women and like half of them are in a jacuzzi. <laughs> and then you appear in my jacuzzi. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like going to McDonald's and be like, I can't believe the food has hamburgers. It's, like, Dude, <laughs> it's on the freaking, it's like the name of the, you know, it's on the menu, bro. Like you ordered it. Hello. You know? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. For the average guys, like we're so fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think back to like, I don't know, like a decade ago, I was like a virgin sitting in my bedroom watching something like this would like yeah, melt yeah. my fucking brain. <laughs> you know? It's like insane. The thing is like you have you know, social media, a big part of it is like communicating like who you are. Right. Sure. So you can you can do that in extreme ways. Definitely. You know, like we one of our students for the millionaire social was like a bodybuilder, right? He's so open about taking like, you know steroids and so like you know like his social media communicates who he is in that way like so in the same way that like if someone looks at my instagram like on what grounds are they going to get mad at me for doing exactly what they saw you, you know what i mean like <laughs> so but at the end of the day you got to be respectful you gotta crazy. Be nice. yeah I, I feel like we do like um i, I wouldn't say I like a harem built but we have something very similar in toronto where, you know, we have these crazy parties. We have like 150, 200, sometimes 300 girls coming out each weekend, right? Yeah. And so with that volume, and then with a lot of the girls knowing, like, you know, Justin, Matt, cool dudes, uh, hook up a lot of girls. And then the fact that we started streaming for bisexual girls. Lately, I found, like, I've been, I've been having threesomes and foursomes yeah. and, like, every single fucking Well, what you guys are doing is months. really very, very similar to what I'm doing in the sense that you're, you have an Instagram that's advertising incredible amounts of fun and you're putting the fun behind what I call a fun wall. And the fun wall is no Justin and Matt and, you know, uh, uh, accept their invitations to, you know, the, uh, I assume the apartment or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the penthouse. And be liked enough to be invited. It's, it's kind of a, sure. it's kind of a similar sure. thing um, because in my case, uh, I do the same thing, but there's no clubs. It's all like my s personal generation. Like my, I generate it through like social media, like boats and dinners and fun and TikToks and all that, you know? So um, it, it's, it's, it's a very similar thing. And so, you know, the, the, the sexual experiences are simply just a shadow of your Instagram because you're telegraphing that. The types of girls that are going to respond to that are the types that are also going to be, want to be a part of it, you know? Definitely. 100%. So I have a question. So you... <laughs> You have this coaching program you're doing. You're doing it here in Columbia. You're living here in Columbia. And what has your experience been like with like the students' results? Like have they have they been able to like replicate this and implement this easily? Um yeah. So uh first do you do you have anything on that? If you want to um, jump in. Yeah, they're wanna, going on a lot of dates, their social media is improving. I think the stuff that David is doing is very advanced. I mean, for all the for example, new viewers that, that are seeing David's content or they're seeing your content, they're seeing 2022 materials but they don't understand how far back we go right definitely we've done all the process of cold approach i mean we started we all started off like roaming the streets of getting middle banned. of nowhere um running going into malls cold yeah. approaching getting, getting banned from malls getting sure. blown out and so yeah it's like a lot of guys try to jump onto the van stuff without knowing like the basic fundamentals of just like even talking to a girl one-on-one -on -one. so a lot of people like the shiny objects. A lot of people want to like, oh, how do I filter and screen for bisexuality? <laughs> and I actually, so they go to David for all the really advanced stuff. And I actually have to push back and be like, no, you're not ready for this. You actually yeah. need to go to the basics, how to have, you know, instead of just screening, because David knows how to text, right? So right now his bottleneck is time. So he has to aggressively screen. But for these guys, they don't have that many leads. I'm like, dude, just slow down. Like, you don't, yeah. you don't need a screen for three sums and four sums. <laughs> just have an interesting conversation. You know, like if you're overweight and you blah blah blah, like focus on text game. Um, think about, you know, is every sentence you're sending is it adding a point to the conversation or is it taking value? And kind of focusing on the basics. But I would say on the program, uh, every guy except for one person is going on dates. Um, yeah, we we have a one of our students is in, uh, approaching his fifties, and he, he actually was here for two weeks uh, alone, and uh, he 
wasn't able to meet anybody. He had zero dates. A bunch of girls just wouldn't meet him up. And, um, you know, he joined our program and he started showing our, our, uh, the screenshots. And then eventually I came here and I said, dude, give me the phone. And I'm opening it and I just gave him all this feedback and I telegraphed it into our mastermind group and he implemented it immediately. And <clears throat> um, after about like four days of adjustments, um, he started going on dates and he went on like over 10. And he, then he finally, his, then, his next issue was they weren't going to his apartment or they weren't sleeping with him. And then that's when we gave him more material, more changes and adjustments and like, you know, ways to make a girl excited about coming over instead of just inviting her over to a mysterious place, the way that you could kind of sell the pool, you know, um, having things to do in the apartment that are interesting enough to justify going there. Uh, reasons that make sense that are non-sexual. Like there's a bunch of stuff. And then he started getting laid and now he's really implementing everything. And, uh, you know, we went to the, to the club and he brought two girls with him, <laughs> you know, and he's like, aren't like, they're all like dancing together. And it's just crazy that just like two weeks ago, this guy was like nothing, you know? And, um, it's really exciting to see that, especially someone like him who again is an older guy. He kind of looks like, like a, like he'd be like a librarian or something, like an accountant, you know, he's like this well-dressed, you know, gentleman, you know, <laughs> and um, the other students um, just got here and, uh, you know, they're getting progress. We have one guy that was getting nothing and now he started getting dates, but now his next issue is like second dates. And um, it's really powerful to be with us all the time because we have a telegram group. Everyone can screenshot. Everyone can just tell the story. We can give instant feedback. And Mike and I are here with them so we can watch them. We can listen to them. And it's also Columbia. So here dating in Columbia is not as hard as dating in like New York City or whatever, right? So they're in a different environment where things are a lot cheaper. And there's more girls that are attractive. And the girls are a little bit easier to meet. So it's, it's kind of a nice playground for practice on a lot of things, you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's our first time in Columbia, but I just noticed how friendly and open everyone is. Yeah. Uh, girls are way more sexual. Like, it is, it's almost like part of the culture to be sexual. Like, it is trippy as fuck. Where it's yeah. like, you see guys in the club, the way they communicate with girls is completely non verbally. Like, if you like a girl, you just kind of go up to her and fucking, and like the girls are very receptive like that. It's so like last night, Matt's talking to a girl and he's just sitting there in the chair, because that's what works in Toronto. Like, if you, if you try to talk to girls like a Columbian guy talks to girls, in Toronto, the girls think you're fucking creepy as fuck, right? Because mm. a lot of these Columbia guys just walk up to girls and start dancing on them. Mm. So, so Matt's just, just sitting on the chair, and, and the girl's expecting Matt to, like, grab her and start dancing, <clears throat> but, but, like, Matt's just, like, texting her on, like, Google Translate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's crazy. For sure. The, the girl from last night, she was, um, she was grabbing my hand to put her on her. I was like, I'm so uncomfortable with this. <laughs> yeah. Just, just looking at me. Just, and I'm like, Matt, like, yo, Matt, Matt, you need to grab her. And so, and so I, I had like a girl. I'm like, kiss your her. cheek. I'm like, Matt, do this. Now, now do this. Now hug her. Now dance. And that's like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, that's the thing. This is so that, laid back. That, that's why. That's why. That's why the millionaire social circle. We have an immersion that's global. We're gonna go to a bunch of different countries, and these are gonna be countries that are handpicked to be great playgrounds, great places to try new things. Obviously, we're gonna pick beautiful cities that are nice. But we're picking because again, one thing about one thing about dating that people don't like to admit is a lot of it is actually location dependent, right? Meaning that there are certain jokes and lines and phrases and techniques that are work better. You know, like a, you know, there is this online dating program that came out like seven years ago called Execute the Program, you know, by Jeffy. Okay. When you watch it, it's interesting because you watch that now. I watch it and I and I see it for what it is. And it, what, what it should really be called is how to meet women in San Francisco as a 40-year-old man. That's what it really is. Because all the jokes and all the references and everything's actually tailored to like San Francisco. Like even like his lines and jokes are all like references to streets. And like, it's like very low, like that. If you, you could not import that and just paste it into like Japan. And so one of the benefits of traveling is you actually get to you know, I call it software, right? So the, like all of us have our own software, like stuff that we, we have a, we have a script, we have an idea, we have a sense of what is good and bad and all that. And so if you take like the dating in Toronto software 
and then run it in Colombia, you're going to get bugs because the language doesn't import. The cultural references don't import. You know what I mean? So when you travel, it allows you to take your software and then all of a sudden you have to adjust it to that. And then once you do that enough places, you get this nice, perfect, um, universal thing. Definitely. Right. Because for me, I know what it's like to, to, to game in English. I know what it's like to game in not English. And I also want to know what it's like to, you know, date in exotic countries and, and like big cities. And so what happens is you just start to do this and you start to, you know, realize like what actually is universally good and what is like just location dependent. Does that make sense? And so the value of traveling with us is that it allows you to play and experiment. Like our, uh, the student, the guy that's in his 50s, one of the things he's doing is he's testing all, all the kind of edgy ideas that I talk about. He's testing them with all the girls that he's not attracted to, right? That's what I'm talking about. He's, he's actually experimenting and he's testing our ideas, but it's a playground for him because it's a country he's not going to live in and it's women that he's not attracted to. And that's a luxury, right? Like if you do that in your hometown, like you might right. piss off people and burn bridges or whatever. Someone's gonna be like, I know that guy, he screenshotted me or whatever. But like, Traveling on the Millionaire Social Circle program, you get a new experience. You get, uh, you know, two coaches with you, like for two weeks straight. We're into huge photo shoots, but it's also a great opportunity to like test stuff. You know, like a, an Uber, a thirty-minute Uber here is five dollars. Right, Insane. everything is cheap. People make three hundred dollars a month, so you can take a girl to a nice restaurant, and it would cost the same as taking her to like a crappy restaurant in like Toronto or whatever. Straight up. You know what yeah. I mean? If you, if, you, if you go to take a girl to like Panda Express, it's like 20 bucks a plate. If you take a girl to the best restaurant in the city, it's $20 a plate, you know, or whatever, like maybe $30. But the point is, that's a lot of uh, uh, wiggle room. You can try new things. You can test new things. Yeah, and, it, that's what I really like about uh, a place like this as well. Like, I mean, you see you guys are going to Manila soon, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, anywhere that is, you know, outside of, you know, America, Canada, England, Australia, Europe, whatever, it's a lot cheaper. And so, like, we come here, dude, it's like a dollar for an Uber. Yeah. I pay for everything. I pay for all the girls. Dude, I, I rock up to the club with uh, three girls last night. Uh -huh. I pay for all their cover. No, no problem. Yeah, of course. It's like yeah. fucking $3. Yeah. I have the Ubers, the food. Like, I don't even The fuck. bottle, the bottle of the club was like $40. I paid, uh, so I paid for balls because I never pay for ball service. Yeah, yeah. I always have bottles, but I always get comp bottles in like back, back in Toronto or whatever, right? I always get like free bottle service, free tables, right? Because uh, I bring so many girls and so much business. But here I'm just like, dude, it's like 25 US dollars for yeah. fucking bottle service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> And also yeah. when you when you pay less, you don't have that, uh, you know, if you pay $300 for a dinner back in the US, you have almost a, a sense of expectation, like, I really hope this works well, right? So the benefit of, you know, being in Colombia and you pay $10 a play is really nice is you're almost more relaxed too, because you're not stressing over Agreed. money. So you can Agreed. be a little bit more uh, yourself. And just to add to the volume thing, a lot of people, especially when they watch on the internet making comments are like, oh, well, Columbia is easier than San Francisco. It's not about easy or hard. It's about you need X amount of reps, X amount of volume to get good, right? So, for example, if you can go on five dates in Columbia in two weeks, and that's part of a program, then that means you're getting five dates per program, right? If we were to run this program in San Francisco, it might take like 10 times as long to get the same number of dates. And at the end of the day, a date with a girl is still a date with a girl. There's a sort of unique uh, set of parameters with this girl. Some girls are more aggressive. Some girls are more conservative. And so you kind of experience the whole spectrum, right? Every girl has their own comfort curves, right? They have a certain curve that they allow you to escalate. And so, uh, yeah, so you want, to, you want it to be time efficient and obviously pick cities where it's just better bang for the buck. Definitely. I mean, the other day I had five dates in a day <laughs> and then the next day I had, uh, four dates, five. And then that, what, what, how are you? What, what times of the day? Uh, I woke up early, met up with a girl, didn't like her, met up with another girl, uh, uh then met up with two girls. It was, it was just so fucked mm -hmm. up, man. It was, uh, like, and I ended up banging three girls that day. And it was just like, in my head, I was like, what the fuck? Right. Because like, so <clears throat> go to a new city and create that abundance from scratch. Very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Right now versus, you know, I, I moved back to Toronto to October, 2020. So there, being there for a, a year and a half, you know, it took me a certain amount of time to build up 
you know, the fucking little harem, whatever you call it, I have built. It's massive soul circle, all these hot girls, whatever, and then banging, you know, how many of them and a couple girlfriends or whatever, right? But then it's like, I done that here in four fucking days. I had two different girls tell me they're in love with me. So yeah, like I show you guys the text messages. I've, I've like, so yesterday I was, I was in a weird mood last night. So I was kind of like in a troll mood. So I'm like texting all the girls that I banged already. And I'm like just starting drama with them just for fun. And I'm, I'm saying like, I love you, but you don't like me. And they're like, no, I love you so much. And like, they're saying me like big ass paragraphs about how they're like, they've been in love with me and shit. And I'm just like, this is fucking crazy. You're texting six <laughs> girls. I've been, I've been in love with you since I met you. <laughs> we're, we're, we're the Uber ride home yesterday. And I'm just copying and pasting my message in Spanish. I'm like, I'm in love with you since the moment we met. And, and like, and so all these girls were like, oh my God, Justin, like, what the fuck? So I, I like one girl crying over me and one girl being like, I love you. Like, it's so, cr- so but we, we've been here for like three or four fucking days, right? So mm-hmm. it, like, think about this though, right? It would take the average guy months to build up that kind of abundance, yeah, yeah. you know, in New York, LA, tomorrow. Like I was living in LA for a fucking summer. Well, yeah, and, see, you guys, you know, another thing is you guys are, you guys are going into, you guys are going from Toronto where you, you guys are probably top 20% guys already in terms of like Instagram and like social media. So then you go here where you're probably top 1%, you know? Yeah. And so, that so, so, uh, that's, that's a thing. That's another thing I talk about is how like, um, you take something like, for example, let's just say income. Income is just one of many things that matter. Uh, to be a top 1% man globally, you only have to earn $30,000 a year to be a top 1% man globally. That's comparing the rest of the world. So that means if you make more than 30K, you are literally richer than 99% of all men in the planet. But if you make 30K in America, you don't have a lot of money. You're broke. You're like a random, you know what I mean? So something like you guys, you guys might be a top 20% guy in Toronto based on the Instagram and the so, and, all. and then you come here where you're easily top 1%. And so that's another thing about traveling is you, like all men, you can think of men as an asset, right? So in some places, an asset is as a man being, is uh, gonna be more scarce or more rare or more valuable or whatever, you, you know what I mean? Like if you're a guy who's five foot 10 at the NBA like roster, like you're short, but like if you go to like Japan, you're tall, you know what I mean? So Traveling is one of those things where you get to experience, like, of course. the benefits of, like, you know, you. Well, build- Justin was talking about that. Justin, about your height, like, <laughs> you feel like you're more alpha being here. Yeah. So even being in Colombia, it's like on one hand, I'm like, dude, I'm so because I'm five foot fucking four, dude, mm-hmm. right? But like, I feel like I'm taller than the average guy here. <laughs> like, let's say fucking height. Right? All it's the like, girls are shorter. Too. Yeah, and and all the girls are shorter, so I, I just feel more masculine just being in the club. Like, I just feel like in my fucking zone. Right. But then on the other hand, I'm like scared to talk to a girl who might be with a guy. Cause I don't want like, like the girl's like drug dealer boyfriend to like stab me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. You guys are a little bit sketchy though. I haven't had too many. Um, there, there's, there's a couple of guys I met. You gotta be real careful with your, the friendships with the guys though. Um, because there's a lot of, uh, gossip and screenshotting and all, you know, like yeah, girls sure. are constantly like, they'll send me like all these profiles. Like, can you block all these people? I'm like, Okay. <laughs> it's like, this is my, this is my brother's friend and you know, stuff like that. Cause I'll run an ad and then everyone sees it and then everyone will send it to people. And it's like, including the guys. Um, yeah. You know, guys will see it sometimes if they see a girl, they know. And uh, you know, nothing I post is ever like disrespectful. It's all, there's a lot of pictures I could, I would, I wish I could post that are not actually that bad. It just makes me look really makes me look cool, but makes the girls look kind of like, a little on the slutty side, but they would be okay with it, but I won't post it just because um, I don't want to stir up any feathers with like non. A lot of girls have their profiles private. Yeah, a lot of, girl, yeah, a lot of girls are very uh, secretive and private and uh, they're, they're always hiding from their, their family. Like a lot, of, a lot of the family is like in the, on the uh, east side, uh, it's in the hood, conservative, you know, family values and stuff. And then a lot of these girls, they're like, they just want to have fun and they want to go crazy. And then on, on the flip, also some of them do webcam. So it's like, they're like doing these like sexual things on camera already. And then they go home and their mom is like, you know, so they go private. They have no profile picture, very, it's very secretive and stuff. So that's why I try to make my Instagram. It's just me sitting with girls smiling. It's not, I try not to be too, you know, too, not, not too crazy. Um, because, uh, 
the Colombian guys, you know, I don't want the ex-boyfriend or like the webcam manager or like the father's friend, the neighbor, you know, and it, it bite them in the ass. So, yeah, it's, it's so crazy to me how, um, a lot of the Colombian girls, they don't have profile pictures. They have no posts on Instagram. And then you, you meet up with them. Yeah. And they're beautiful. Like last night, Matt and I met a girl and Matt's like, this is the hottest girl I've ever seen in Colombia. She's a smoke show. And I just met her outside the club. It's like, it's like 4.30 in the morning. Went to this like uh, after hours fucking yeah. club thing. And cause like, we, we just didn't want to stop talking to girls. It was, it was awesome. And um, I get this girl's social media. And I'm like, Matt, this girl would be the perfect girlfriend because she's super fucking hot. Yeah. She's like super like white skin and she has zero posts on Instagram and she only has like 200 followers. Yeah. Like, this is like wife and material right here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you don't have to worry about like other dudes and shit because like she, she doesn't fucking know anybody, you yeah. know? It, it's it's interesting how um, they're private there. Yeah, yeah, I went on a date with this girl. Uh, before we met, I asked for her Instagram. She's like, oh, I don't have one. It wasn't until I hooked up with her. She's like, oh, I actually do have one. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how am I going to, you know, at first I'm like, how am I going to screen you out take a look? And what's funny is there was a like from David. I'm like, how the fuck did David like your picture? And I didn't even know you had an Instagram. <laughs> like, what's going on, dude? Did David fuck this girl already? What? You, you didn't funny. follow her. So right before coming to Columbia, like the weekend before coming here, uh-huh. um, I met these two Colombian girls and I asked for their Instagram and like, I thought they were just being really, really sketchy. Because, mm-hmm. like, the girl's like, oh, I don't have Instagram. I don't use Instagram. Yeah. And then uh, later on, I add another girl that I met that night. Because, like, I, I was doing a little party. And yeah. I juiced two girls together. And I had other, other girls on Instagram. And I see that she has this girl on Instagram. Like, they just posted a fucking story together. I'm like, I'm like I thought you didn't have fucking Instagram. Yeah. Right? They're, they're really weird about it. But I think it's a culture thing. More than, like, yeah. they're not trying to be disrespectful. It's just, like, a weird culture thing, you know? Should we just, like, jump into some, like, yeah. super spicy stuff? Or, sure, yeah. Or, like... But Mike, do we have any any other like, you know, you're more business savvy. Is there any like stuff that we should talk about? Do you guys want juicy or do you guys want? I mean, you have all the juicy stuff. I'm more of the business. Guys. Well, that well, I know. I I would just talk about juicy stuff, but you might be like, oh, we'll talk about the juicy stuff that promotes the program. That's how I. I don't know. We kind of. I mean, I think I think we did a pretty. What's the crazy yeah, story you've had in here in Cali? Um, let me let me think. Yeah, let, let me just think of a, some. Um, Give me a category. <laughs> Honestly, dude, like we're so open on this podcast, and well, because crazy, like what, like, like I, I want, I want to hear, I like, want him to cra- to, I kind of want him to top Justin. Top <laughs> Justin, you mean like danger or like sex or like? I want to hear the most like crazy, fucked up, like sexual experience you've had here. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so <laughs> man, I don't know if I could talk about this stuff, dude. <laughs> Just. Uh, so I've had girls get into fights over who gets my cum in their mouth. You know? <laughs> so like when I first started this, you know, I didn't have a manager and I, you know what I mean? Like, so some girls, you know, it's kind of unclear, like who the hierarchy. Cause I, I used to have, when I first started this, I didn't have a rule book. I didn't have a hierarchy. So like I have a rule book that all the girls must read it. Uh, it's long too. It has emojis, it's rules, expectations, benefits, et cetera, et cetera. There's a hierarchy. I have Queens, Amigas and girlfriends. And when I first started, it was unclear, like, who's important, like, and so girls started to develop a, a, a sense of who was important based on, like, who slept in my bed, because I used to, you know, I rent these big apartments with multiple rooms, and then girls also started to, like, whoever I, like, orgasmed inside of or on, so, like, girls started fighting, like, like over the dick, like, like, they would, you know, it, it's, it's awful, it sounds like, again, it's one of those, like, no one's believing this story, but... Like they would be like, oh, you got it last time, blah, blah, you know, and like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> and you know, and like they would actually get kind of like heated about it. Um, another thing is um, girls would uh, fight over um, selfies, like who's, you know, stuff like that, like very petty stuff. Um, I, I once took a couple of girls to the lingerie uh, store and I was like, hey, we should go to the lingerie store, buy some cute, sexy outfits. We could take pictures. And I already had like six sets of lingerie. So I went there and I only found, I had three girls with me or four. I had four girls with me and I bought three new sets because I already had six and they didn't have a lot that I really wanted to buy. So then we go back to the place and one girl was just so pissed. And I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, you didn't buy me one. And I was like, what? I, I bought four or I bought three 
but I didn't buy them for anyone specific. You just happened to not put on like the girls put theirs on faster than you. And, uh, you know, we had like this, she like thought like, I didn't like her, like something that petty can make the girl feel like you have to make all of them so, feel special and equal. And that even goes down to the, like the sexuality, you know, like who gets fucked first, who gets fucked last. They'll start interpreting it weird ways. Some girls think first is the best. It's actually not the best. I, li <laughs> I like to finish with the one that's the hottest or the one in general. It's like whoever's the new girl gets fucked first or whoever I think is the hottest gets fucked last. So like, you know, the, because the girl who's new is the most insecure. And so we also have this thing, we call it the royal treatment. So the royal treatment is a sexual position that's for the new girl. So the royal treatment is all the girls will be like, okay, she's a new girl. We got to give her the royal treatment. So she'll be on her back and I'll be fucking her. And then all the girls just like kiss her neck and kiss her boobs and like go crazy. And like everyone's focused on making her feel great. And it, it's like a great introduction to the whole like situation because she's just like getting all this attention and it's like incredible, you know? Um, then whoever is like the girl, I actually just want to like, like the one I'm most attracted to gets fucked last, but the girls don't know what is better. So like some girls will feel, it's just like all these little stories of like weird things that to me don't matter that much, but to them it matters a lot because there's not, there's nothing else you know, cause they're all doing the same thing with me at the same time. We're all going to the same place. You know what I mean? But then in that area, it's like, I only have one dick. So there is inequality because it's only one dick. You know what I mean? So I think that would probably be a crazy story. Um, shit. Um, I mean, there's, you know, there's stories that are crazy, like on paper, but maybe not crazy in the world of you guys, you know, like, you know, I've had threesomes and bathrooms and stuff. Like I was at the El Gringo, the, the restaurant. And, um, I was with, uh, my friend Mike, who's a the old professor guy, and I was horny, and I was like, you know, I was talking to the girls. I was like, hey, I want to show you guys something upstairs, and then we're like walking. And I just grab both of their necks and I like guide them to the bathroom, and they're like, oh my god, and then we just they just both started sucking my dick, and I just started fucking both of them, and there's like people going through the bathroom. We're like, oh my god, and then like you know, <laughs> and then I just take them back downstairs, and like we just start eating, you know. <laughs> Or like, um, you know, blowjobs and taxis. And I mean, these are, these are funny and flashy, but I don't like doing them too much because it's one of those things where if you get caught, caught, if you, if someone sees it and, you know, Columbia is very sensitive to like image and like, rep, you know what I mean? They're going to interpret it in the worst way you could think of like, oh, this gringo is abusing prostitutes and he's making them do things. You know what I mean? Um, I've had... Let me think. Man. Um, I mean, you know, I guess the nine sum was kind of crazy, you know. Um, that was uh it's kinda crazy. I had I had eleven girls. <laughs> I had eleven girls and eight of them were on my bed and you know what I mean? Like it once you go above four, it's the diminishing returns is like really not great. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like three, you know, two is great. Three is what was hot. that like? How did how long did that last? So, first we all had you know a bit to drink, so it was really sloppy. But basically, it was like I'm on the bed and the girls are taking off my clothes, and like one girl hops on, and one girl's hopping on this and hat, and the fingers are everywhere, dildos are everywhere, and it, it's really just like messy and ridiculous. Mm. And and um, it's also just kind of really stressful because what happens is like girls will come in and like like like. It's like a revolving door where like girls are coming in and out and you, you, you're like, oh, is she leaving because she's mad? Is she coming? You know, what's going on? And some girls are like, where's my phone charger? And you're like, <laughs> I'm in the middle. You know what I mean? <laughs> where's my phone charger? Yeah. Like, you know, um, damn. The vibrator what? died. <laughs> David, but, where's the charger? But, but what's, what's really crazy, though, is like, um, you know, a, a good a good number, though, is like when you have like four or five and then, you know, you, you, fuck, you, you have enough stamina to fuck all of them and then maybe you finish. And what's really cool is the girls... Um, are like paired up and uh, they'll all like dildo each other and stuff. And it's kind of fun to like, you're laying in bed, you're like on your phone and there's girls everywhere just like all moaning around you. It's kind of like this spiritual thing, you know, like this, like this, like, oh, yeah. and I have it on video too. <laughs> I have it on video. They're all like, they're all going to town. You know what I mean? And so it's like this little like ritual, like, like a, you know, like a humming and you know, all that stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, my uh, God. oh, I have, I have, a, I have a funny story. Uh, so I got kicked out of like four apartments when I first got here. Um, by the way, one of the values of the millionaire social circle is we will select apartments for you that are guest friendly. And the way that we'll discover those is 
I'll be going to these countries like one or two months ahead to discover them for myself because I, I have to do that anyway. Um, I get kicked out of a lot of apartments and um, it's funny because sometimes you like talk to security guards and like you just, you're like, hold on, like, is it okay? And I like show them, like I remember in Nicaragua, I had to get a piece of paper and I had to do stick figures and it was like a man and I had, a, I drew like four girls. I go, is this okay? Like I, I didn't know how to communicate because like, how do you say like, oh, I have a lot of girlfriends. They're like, oh, you mean you have a girlfriend and then another girlfriend and they're going to come over one at a time, different days. And they're like, no, no, no. Like I have four that will all come. And so I got, I drew a stick figure of like a little man <laughs> with like little women. And I, and I was like, is this okay? <laughs> yes or no? Si, senor? Gusta? No gusta. And then one of the apartments here, I showed him my Instagram. I'm like, I do this. Can I do this here? He goes, and, and again, he's not listening. He's just like, whatever it takes to get this dumbass to give me the money. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I go, okay, but like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, like I'm going to have lots of women in the house. Is that okay? He's like, oh, senor, no problem. And then day, day one, four girls come in. And he goes, what, what, you know, what, what do you, and I'm like, dude, like I showed you the picture. I said, it's okay. And he was like, oh, I thought, I, like he wasn't, he didn't like believe me or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's like if I was like showing a picture of like me with like lions <laughs> or something like me, like at a zoo, I'm like, is this okay? And he's like, whatever, dude, whatever's okay. Your, 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 your Instagram is cool. Like, I don't, and, and he's like, hold on, wait, why is there so, and I'm like, dude, I, and he's like, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, uh, I don't know. How about whatever I want? Why does it matter? You know what I mean? And so I had to like, I had to like tip this guy. I'm like, bro, like how much can I just give you just to let me do this? And he's like, like ten dollars, I'm like fuck. I gotta take this guy ten bucks every, you know what I mean? And um, I had to get my assistant to like butter him up, and you know, it's like this is is this really what I want to do? You know what I mean? I have to security guards, not now because I found an apartment, but you had to, you have to like make a friendship, and you're like, bro, like let me like you know, you just like I'm crazy, you know, I'm just a crazy gringo. I like to have fun, you know, and then it's like it's just not you just don't want to do that, you know. Um, yeah, so this is a common thing. I think Airbnbs are getting more and more strict, and especially with traveling being more prevalent. You know, a lot of people are working online, you know, do e-commerce, um, entrepreneurs going to, like, Latin American countries. We've had, you know, same thing. A lot of my buddies, we go to different Airbnbs. It's the same fucking shit. The guy, the guy that's managing the Airbnbs is not communicating with the security guard downstairs. There's a lot of miscommunication. Sometimes there's like, you know, a middle manager and a lot of times we'll have to like tip. So, uh, yeah, these are things that like people that are watching on the internet, they don't understand. These are like, you know, actually really huge frictions. So, yeah, so what, what David does is he goes to a country a couple months beforehand gets all the logistics and finds the, you know, finds a manager that's cool with the comp the apartment complex where, you know, we can bring as many guests as we want, but that's some, that's huge, right? Uh, there's nothing worse than getting to 99% and then you get cop blocked by the security yeah. guards, you know, crazy, man, <laughs> crazy fucking stories, dude. All right, man. You, you know what? We had a killer fucking podcast here. Crazy stories. Super fun. Uh, I highly recommend everyone check you guys out. Where, where can these guys find you? If, if anyone wants to like come follow your content or follow you or your stories or whatever, where, where can they find you? So David Bond, Instagram.com. We'll just redirect to my Instagram um, or the millionaire social circle.com. Um, those are two places. YouTube, David Bond, pretty much. Yeah. Mine, uh, my new YouTube channel is stem to stud. Um, Cause my old one got to wiped out. <laughs> yeah, stem to stud. All right, cool. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks so much for being uh, on the Wingman Podcast. Thank you. Really, Thank you. really crazy fucking stories <laughs> and uh, really interesting. And uh, is there anything else you guys want to add before we cut out? No, just check us out on YouTube. Uh, David Bond, stem to stud. Uh, you know, check out the millionaire social circle.com. We'll be having uh, programs, uh, multiple programs a year. And uh, if you want to be, Instead of watching us, if you guys want to travel with us and have some of these stories for yourself, uh, definitely uh, jump on a call with us and um, we'll see if uh, you qualify to be one of the students. And uh, Yeah, we have an online version for those who can't travel and then we have an in-person program and every three months we're going to be in a different country. Cool. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, well, Six. we'll see you guys uh, next time.